In 1997, 38 members of a group called Heaven's Gate committed suicide under direction from their leader, believing they had completed their multiple life journey and were ready to ascend to the next spiritual plane. They also believed they needed to do it quickly so their spirits could catch a ride on a spaceship in the tail of a passing comet. The members took phenobarbital, mixed with applesauce and washed down with vodka, then secured plastic bags around their heads to induce asphyxiation. Authorities found the dead lying neatly in their own beds, faces and torsos covered in a square purple cloth. All were dressed in identical black shirts and sweatpants. Brand new black and white Nike athletic shoes and armband patches reading Heaven's Gate away team. The adherents between the ages of 26 and 72 are believed to have died in three groups after three successive days, with remaining participants cleaning up after each prior group's death. The video you are about to see is a clip from a goodbye video they made beforehand. While they were on Earth, they operated a computer consulting company, meeting the computer needs of various clients. The speaker describes an interaction with a specific client. This client knew there was something different about the company he hired. But this is for our clients. And you may ask, well, who are our clients? Well, as a quote monastery, we've had a little business that we call Higher Source from which we earned our income so we could consume while we were on this planet. And we always were self-supporting, which um, a lot of entities that were in our position might not be. But we would like those individuals that we work with to remember how they felt about us, how what kind of work we did for them, and to try not to be influenced by what the media might say. Because we suspect, um, knowing the track record of the media, that it might not be ultra favorable or objective. So you've had a unique opportunity to work with us directly, and there have been more than one client who has suspected that there was a little something unusual about us. And um, one particular individual came up to us one day and said something like, I'm halfway expecting one of these days that you're going to come through the door and say something like, the big guy upstairs <laughs> sent us you know, to work with you. And we kind of sat on our hands and held our tongue at the time because we were trying to be a little bit restrained in our identity so that um, we could earn some sticks as we call them. But to that individual I'd like to say at this time that God did have a message for you but it was a bit premature when you asked <laughs> and we'd like to let you know that uh, he's had an eye on you and uh, we uh, want to let you know that you might need to get someone else to finish up your website right now <laughs> and that uh, we might see you all again, and then we might not, but we hope that you remember us as we were, and not how other people are going to try and tell you that we are. And one last thing we'd like to say is, 39 to beam up. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> What do you think about when you hear the word cult? Where do you think the line can be drawn between cult and religion? What if I told you that line wasn't so clear? Let me ask you from a different angle. How does a religion start? Would it surprise you to learn that all religions start out as cults? In the interest of time, let's focus on the three main Western religions. Judaism started out as a Babylonian cult known as the Yahwists. Christianity started out as a Jewish cult. Islam started out as a Christian cult. It's with this historical look in mind that sociologists no longer use the word cult. Since all religions, by definition, are new, to avoid negative connotations that come with the word cult, sociologists just use the term new religious movement. So when I say religions start out as cults, it makes sense logically if you think about it. Since by definition, when something first starts out, it's new. The negative stigma of the word cult comes from the members' deviance from established societal norms on religion. To completely write off this deviance as benign, however, would be disingenuous to some of the things I've seen them do just in my life. 
How do the suicides in Jonestown or Heaven's Gate compare to the suicide bombers in the Middle East? The answer is that all religion tends to have a similar causal impact, whether newly formed or long established. New religious movements are often accused of brainwashing to coerce their members into strange behavior. But this strange behavior is equivalent to, if not consistent with, established religions. In most cases, members embrace these ideals willingly and enact behaviors encouraged of them in the movement group. Being part of any religion has more to do with trying to become part of something, and as a part, you must conform. Newly formed and established religions tend to operate on the same basic principles. They capitalize on prospective members' doubts in an attempt to bring them into the fold. They offer prospective members physical or emotional comfort that the prospective members aren't finding anywhere else. This isn't so much brainwashing as it is spurring prospective members to rationalize their own dependence on the religion in question. This can lead to a level of devotion that might lead one to become a danger to themselves or others. That standard is applied to court-ordered psychiatric treatment. Neurologists and other researchers are finding more and more links between religious experience, chemical imbalance, and psychotic behavior all the time. But at the end of the day, what's changed? Some researchers argue that no one really talks to God so much as they talk to themselves. Sociologist Emil Durkheim believes people make attribution errors in terms of thinking they are experiencing God, when in fact, what they are actually experiencing is the power of the group. Yes, new religious movements display deviant behavior. Yes, some of this behavior can potentially cause one to become a danger to themselves or others. But these behaviors are a possibility with any religion. It's not fair to single out new religious movements on this count just because they're new. New religious movements are often perceived as being led by a charismatic leader offering a new way of life. But the more deeply you examine the process of conversion, you'll find this is the same dynamic in every religion, old and new. For purposes of understanding religion better, it can be helpful to compare and contrast different instances of religiosity. Please remember that new religious movements are religion, of course, just newer versions of religion.